another very important advantage. In other kinds of cancers, we don't have, after treatment, we don't have excellent methods of monitoring the success of treatment. PSA before a diagnosis of cancer can be equivocal. It can be yes or no. But we follow PSAs after the treatment of prostate cancer, and that's an excellent and accurate estimate of any recurrence. So in other types of cancers, when a recurrence occurs, it's usually much more long and more advanced before we find out about it. In prostate, one-tenth of a point higher in PSA tells us the prostate cancer is reactivated, and then we can intervene at an earlier stage with less drastic methods. Now, if insurance doesn't pay, can the person who has a risk then ask, petition to have it yes, uh, covered? Yes, yes, yes. And if we make the diagnosis of prostate cancer and submit the diagnosis of prostate cancer along with the blood test for more frequent PSAs, most insurances accept that. Now, what is the role of ultrasound? Ultrasound um, is used when we do a biopsy of the prostate. When we have a patient whose PSA has gone up or whose digital rectal examination is abnormal, then we will propose a biopsy. And a biopsy is to take samples about uh, from the prostate, uh, and those samples are taken from the posterior aspects of the prostate because only in the posterior aspect does the prostate cancer develop in an early stage. Now show us the posterior aspect on this model. The posterior aspect would be this part of the prostate here, which is right close to the rectum. So putting a finger in the rectum, we can feel the posterior aspect. What the ultrasound does, ultrasound in itself cannot see microscopic disease, cannot see cancer. Only the pathologist can see that. But the ultrasound allows me to aim my biopsy needle in this particular area, the posterior aspect of the prostate, where more cancer is found at an early stage. Now, how um, does one determine if they have prostate cancer? How do you determine what type of treatment? Well, it's, there, are, there are basically uh, four different types of treatment once we diagnose prostate cancer. But the first things that we look at when we have a patient with prostate cancer is the level of the PSA. Generally, a PSA less than 20 units means that the prostate cancer is localized to the prostate and hasn't spread. A PSA which is above 20, we have to raise the question that there is prostate cancer outside of the prostate and in lymph nodes. Then the next important thing to determine is the Gleason grade. Now, Dr. Gleason is an excellent, wonderful pathologist at John Hopkins, who for the past 30 years has done nothing but study prostate cancer. And what he did was he compared the uh, microscopic appearance of the cancer with the clinical course. So he was able to tell us which forms of cancer are aggressive and which are not. This grading system that Dr. Gleason developed is now used worldwide and is very accurate. If we pass the slides to different pathologists, they will come up always with the same numbers because the rules are very clear. And the Gleason grades go from 1 to 10. Most people that have prostate cancer are in the 5, 6, 7, 8 range. There are, we know that in the past, when we did many autopsies, many men who died at 80 would be found to have prostate cancer. This was not an active form of prostate cancer. This was a Gleason grade 2 or 3. And today, if a person comes in with a Gleason grade 2 or 3, we don't do anything. We do watchful waiting. You continue monitoring their PSAs and their digital exam and their symptoms and only intervene if things change. If um, the Gleason grade is a 5, 6, or 7, then we th think about various ways of treating them. Now, the Gleason grade is only after there's a tissue specimen. Exactly. The Gleason grade is based on the pathologic examination. So if a person starting at age 40 has a normal PSA 0.2 for 10 years yes. and then goes to... 3, all of a sudden. 3. 3.0. Yes. Then that's when they would first have the first digital exam, rectal exam. Well, the first rectal exam should really start around at age 50. Okay. On a routine with, basis. With the primary with care. With the primary care physician. And then it, the, the PSA has now risen. Yes. So then the next thing is this person then goes to see you. 
That's correct. Uh, urologist. A urologist. And the urologist would also do the digital rectal exam, would probably repeat the PSA to be sure that it was correct, might add this new test, the free PSA, and based on those, might recommend a biopsy. The biopsy is done in the office. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, usually no um, anesthetic? anesthetic is given. Um, we, in our office, we use a little medicine to relax the patient a little bit and to make the experience a little bit more pleasant because it could be unpleasant. Uh, the biopsy uh, risks, it's always, we always weigh the advantage versus the risks. And the risk of a biopsy are, is infection. And fortunately, that happens infrequently. All patients who are biopsied are treated before the biopsy and after the biopsy with antibiotics. So, for example, using your anatomic model, you would pass a catheter through no, the... No, no, you wouldn't. Um, in the, many years ago, we would go through the urethra to do a biopsy, but that was not biopsying the area that was most frequently cancerous. We go through the rectum with the ultrasound to see the prostate. Through the ultrasound probe, a small needle comes out and enters the prostate. It does go through the, the rectal wall to get to the prostate, and this is why we treat with antibiotics. Okay. And it's rare that an infection occurs, but if it does, that's serious. Uh -huh. We can also see some bleeding in the urine uh, for a day or so after the biopsy. And then they, it's an office procedure. They go home. Yes. And then how many days later they get the diagnosis? Usually within three days, the pathologist will be able to give us a diagnosis. And then you will know whether it is Gleason 0, 1, 2, 3, exactly. or... Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Then when we do that, uh, we generally will uh, do other tests to define the extent of the cancer. And those tests that are commonly done is a CAT scan or a CT scan of the pelvis and abdomen to look for any spread of the disease or any other disease that will make um, an effect on how we treat the patient. And we also do a bone scan because prostate cancer goes to bone. Many times when the PSA is less than 20, these exams will be normal, but they're still useful as a baseline. Now, Once we've done that, then we sit and talk with the patient about the various options for treatment. Now, what is the role of um, the digital exam earlier than age 50? Is there any role? Well, if your father had prostate cancer, uh, or uncle, or grandfather, then I would very much encourage people to start a full examination, including the digital rectal examination, much earlier. What The reason we say start at 50 is because men, unfortunately, ignore going to see a urologist or avoid it, and in many cases pay a very heavy price because they're afraid of having a digital exam. Um, and so... Uh, I thought it was common for all teenage boys to start getting it. No. Ever, no. With their pediatrician and their... Not a rectal exam. Oh, not a rectal, not a okay. Rectal exam. Now, what happens with um, when you have men who come in who have normal PSA from 40 to age 60 mm -hmm. and only 60 it rises? Do you have a different suspicion of different types of cancer or the aggressiveness of cancer? Not really. Not same. really. It goes through the same, same procedure. The same. Exactly. And then once you have the diagnosis, let's say they have stage 5 or 6 for the Gleason... Right grade, then wh what are the treatment options you would then say to this male patient? Exactly. If he was an elderly patient and there were many other diseases, we might say it might be good just to watch and to monitor your symptoms and your PSA. If the patient was healthy and had a reasonable lifespan ahead of him, then you could say, particularly for a patient in 5, 6, and 7 Gleason grade, you can pick any one of the various options for treatment because they are all successful equally. In other words, one could choose to have the prostate removed surgically, one could choose to have the prostate radiated externally, or one could choose a technique called brachytherapy, where radioactive seeds are placed in the prostate. And what we've seen monitoring these three techniques over the past 12 years, they all have the same cure rate. Now, so tell us about the radioactive seeds, which seems now to be the least invasive. It is the least invasive. This is about a uh, seed that's the size of a diameter of a paper clip. Diameter of a paper clip and about approximately a sixteenth of an inch long. So it's